Well, you must have heard about the Stockholm syndrome. Some of you may have even heard about the Berlin syndrome. But have you heard about the Paris syndrome? Well, I'm not making this up, but the Paris syndrome actually exists. It's something that a lot of people experience when they actually reach Paris and then they find that this city is not what a uh, popular culture movies and these uh, you know Netflix shows like Emily in Paris make it out to be and that is heartbreaking i mean there are reports after reports of people from japan going to paris and finding the city so heartbreakingly inadequate to their ambitions and their dreams that they sometimes have a complete breakdown well why did i just talk about that because that's almost something what has happened to the indian contingent at the paris olympics we went there with great ambitions there were murmurs that we would probably get into double digits for the first time this time around well as things stand at the end of the 12th day we have uh, three medals all of them bronze medals uh, so far and even medals that were like definitely medals have slipped out of our grasp on that very sad note uh, i'd like to welcome you guys to pod of the rings this is me amit kamat uh, one of the co-hosts our other co-host is mihir vasavda who's joining us from paris where he has been covering the olympics the third co-host is somewhere in noida welcome vinayak vinayak before i come to you once again because mihir is always short on time talking to us let me just go to mihir once mihir uh, usually usually when you are at a big ticket event like the paris olympics and uh, you have a breaking news story you know you are basically giddy with the excitement that you know maine kuch kiya hai like i mean it's your equivalent of being on the podium right when you break a story when you are one of the only journalist in the world to know that something has happened and you are the one to inform the world i mean that's the kind of thing we i guess we became journalists for you had one of those or maybe more than one of those moments today i have legitimately lost track of how many stories you've written what you've done today but just like i did in yesterday's pod of the rings i'd uh, just like to invite you in by asking you what sort of a day has it been because uh, you started the day by reporting about vinesh who when we went to sleep yesterday was assured of a medal because she'd reached the final and today she has been disqualified from the event so just just wanted to bring you in and ask you what sort of a day has it been oh guys uh, do we even want to talk about vinesh i don't know if uh, any of us have uh, the will power the strength to relive this whole thing you know funnily i woke up on wednesday morning and uh, i was thinking about all the pieces that could be written if she won the gold medal and it was within for reach i planned out some three pieces everything from her personality piece and her olympic heartbreaks the last 12 months i'm sure we would have had this big splash across our paper everything was planned and at around quarter to 8 in the morning just got this call and someone said that uh, you know she's disqualified i first thought it was a joke i didn't really take it seriously it uh, turned out that it wasn't and uh, as i kind of started to dig in and dig in more and more it just became clear that you know she wasn't just disqualified but she wouldn't even get a medal and uh, you know as well as uh, one of the thumb rules that we follow is uh, to not get involved in a story not take it too kind of uh, emotionally attached in it i'll admit that there was this time when uh, it did happen uh, you know you it came as a proper gut wrenching moment this was a wrestler who's seen so much who's endured so much pain on the wrestling mat outside it and was supposed to be her crowning moment where everything that she has endured where she has suffered fell into place and here she was instead of standing with a medal under the eiffel tower where this wrestling arena is she was on a bed inside the polyclinic of the games village with an iv drop uh, injected into her veins with stuff to take this uh, not just because india lost her potential gold but it had a really big 
demoralizing effect, uh, impact on on the rest of the contingent you saw immediately how antim pangal who was favorite to finish on the podium crash out in the first round wasn't expected because antim had a a very favorable draw and then what she did was something really really naive and stupid trying to smuggle in her sister inside the athletes village with her accreditation card and got caught by security it became a police case inside the village both will be deported back to india on thursday extremely embarrassing it's something that india didn't need on this day yeah i mean i don't have much words really to express how sad it is to kind of you know be at and olympics covering games like on days like these it's uh, something that kind of shakes your haya uh, i don't know i don't know what else to add to this right mihir uh, we've seen the kind of outcry that that has been caused in india there is a lot of misinformation going as well and uh, for all of you guys who are listening and who want to who you heard a lot of hot takes uh, yesterday about how you know vinesh could have just a short or definitely taken a silver medal by sitting out and or pretending to have an injury or faking an injury or whatever that's not how it works our colleague shashank nair has done an excellent explainer breaking down exactly why vinesh was essentially cornered into giving weight i mean she didn't have an option the rules are rules that's a phrase that you're going to hear a few times over the next few days and yeah we've also heard a lot of reactions coming in from the rest of the world including uh, former olympic and world champions like jordan burrows from the us there has been a social media campaign to give vinesh a silver medal vinesh herself has basically tried to do the only thing that she knows when she's cornered or when she's on the mat which is fighting so she's taken her case to the court of arbitration for sport which is the the supreme court if you will for sporting judgments so she's gone there to plead her case by the time you hear this podcast we may or may not have a ruling we don't know exactly what time the ruling is but me here just wanted to know about the reaction from the rest of the world because you are at paris you are seeing you know the americans fighting the japanese fighting in the mix zone so what are the kind of things that you are hearing from the rest of the world uh, the thing with the court of arbitration for sport is that uh, you know vinesh has reached out there is a possibility of a hearing being held on thursday generally at the olympics how this works is there will be a fast track hearing and if the court of arbitration which is uh, you know an independent body and all they believe there is enough merit in vinesh's case then her plea that she should be given the silver medal will be upheld if they don't if they think that you know the rules are written it's all there then it will be rejected and uh, let's see how that goes the thing over here actually is uh, how the wrestling community has reacted to this whole incident that i haven't met a single person over here who thinks uh, this was the right decision a couple of americans have spoken in favor of vinesh the coaches from greece nigeria turkey all of them have been very very supportive of vinesh and they feel very strongly that the rules set by the united world wrestling are a bit too stringent they point out at two things the first that to give way in on two days is uh, extremely tough so they have asked that those rules should be kind of relooked and then uh, they say that even if they ask you know wrestlers to give weights on two days then it should be a little slight exemption on the second day where you kind of give them 2 kg leeways here and there one or 2 kg so these are all points that are being spoken about some of the legends of wrestling have spoken in favor of vinesh she's got overwhelming support from everyone which is extremely heartening to see that's that's one of the better things to come out from you know this otherwise very gloomy story the kind of support she has gotten even the uwwe president nenad lalovich when i spoke to him said that he felt extremely sad for vinesh and understands her disappointment but well rules are rules and that's the bottom line isn't it the fact remains that unfortunately vinesh was 100 grams over and it has resulted in whatever has happened yeah thank you we'll we'll just hang on for one more question maybe because i just like to bring in vinayak at this point and then i'll throw it back to you vinayak uh, this day started with us falling us being one of our athletes being 100 grams over the weight that she was supposed to be and uh, the day has ended with uh, one of our athletes not lifting 1 kg less than she was supposed to between these two things between these two heartbreaks we've had the absolute 
embarrassment of an athlete who is getting deported tomorrow for trying to sneak in her sister i don't know man what kind of a day has it been i guess i'm assuming we have rules for language on our podcast i'm guessing <laughs> I know I don't know uh, but I have to ask you because you've now taken me in this direction <laughs> did I swear because I'm pretty sure I'm I'm at that stage where uh, I would have sworn <laughs> no not yet okay. not yet uh, yeah I mean we have sworn a couple of times on chat today <laughs> and on our calls during the day uh what kind of a day has it been absolute a uh, disaster of a day for so many reasons actually i mean the only disaster actually is vinesh not getting a chance to fight the others are i mean of course people win and lose so that is not a disaster so let let me clarify that the only disaster is what has happened to vinesh so many things i am still trying to wrap my head around the whole thing first of all this has been my biggest feeling throughout the day i hope she recovers from this physically and mentally right that i think is the most important of all things said and done nothing else matters really i mean when we heard from here that she's been in hospital because of feeling dizzy and dehydration it really hit you right what she's been going through all night dr parriwala spoke about the kind of things that they tried to do to make her make her meet the weight uh, things like cutting the hair the photos that we've seen today you could see that her hair has been shortened since the day before they tried to apparently shorten the clothes one thing that was really sad among the many sad things today was the kind of blame game that was going on from a lot of people even experts on news channels people saying things like you know it was a mistake we should have known better you know what was her team doing and all that i couldn't bring myself to think that way i believe there was even a olympic medalist who said this right yeah i don't want to get there yeah. because it's it's a whole yeah. can of worms will be opening right if you go yeah. there the biggest thing that bothered me was like the really quick nature to blame someone when we don't know enough of what was going on even when we discussed in the morning amit and i had a call in the morning for those listening on whether we should do a podcast at say around 2 pm 3 pm but then we spoke about it and we hesitated because the very nature of information that was coming in from there was it was all developing it was all you know fresh we all had to process it so the number of people who were very quick to blame someone was slightly disappointing to see there might be someone to blame eventually i don't know what is going to happen i still don't understand what went on behind the scenes that led to this this is going to be a developing story for a long time it's not going to go away that you know now that the day is over but yeah there was too much judgment being passed without enough information and like amit said please do read that explainer that shashank nair has done on each and every question that you would have in your mind the biggest question that was going around was would she feign injury yesterday and then win a silver right and that's not the rule so she can't do that and there are other questions what is a weight cut on all that is there on the website do check it out yeah sorry i know i'm supposed to speak about mira ban i'm keeping me here waiting i just wanted to get this off my chest quickly i think uh, yes yeah, she could have maybe feigned injury but she would legitimately have to cut off an appendage <laughs> i mean i i'm sorry i know I, i shouldn't be making jokes at this point but i mean this is coming from a point of frustration right because all of the things that we've read today all of these social media influencers who come bandwagon jumping once in four years and watch sport i mean imagine the gall that somebody who's never watched sport and i'm pretty sure they've not watched any of uh, vinesh's bouts but to be on social media and tell people that you know vinesh and her team did not know the rules and if they had just faked an injury they probably would have won silver they lost india as silver i mean boss please This is a person that has given decades to this country, decades to the sport, decades to winning a medal. You have no idea what they are going through. That photo that that the IOA shared, where you can visibly see that she is cut off her hair. Imagine trying to be there, trying to cut off your hair. Can you imagine? Can you just maybe try and process this thought that you are at an Olympic stage? Everybody who goes there is probably trying to look their best because they know they are going to be watched by the rest of the world. this woman is there she knows she's about to go in and fight into the gold medal bout she's cutting off her hair and it looks like she's just probably taken a pair of scissors and cut it herself like roughly whatever she could do i mean that's the kind of levels we are talking about which you can't comprehend boss so maybe shouldn't anyway sorry when i sorry for the interruption for this complete rant out of the blue no no we are perfect <laughs> that's all right uh, yeah and just on the note that you finished uh, me starts and ends his piece beautifully beautifully written piece as always with me here imagine your vinesh fogart is the first line and the last line i mean i'm kind of spoiling it but the last line is you probably can't imagine what it takes to be vinesh fogart because 
it's not easy right so that was lovely i think we're making mihir wait too long mihir before we let you go just quickly the day started with uh, 100 grams and like amit put it it ended with 1 uh, kilogram you were there at the venue today you would have initially been made to choose between vinesh and mirabai but yeah the choice was made for you so how was that like to watch uh, mira compete oh well mirabai how do we even <laughs> a proper punch in the guts right again the day started with vinesh's news and ends with mira by finishing fourth how many more fourth place finishes are we going to get at these olympics and look i mean i'll be very honest uh, people will say that mira by was a sure shot contender for a silver or bronze or whatever the podium finish they were hoping she'd be at but the fact remains that she was always always uh, on the edge with her fitness with the way she had been struggling to keep herself fit for these games and it's not her fault she's been lifting in human weights for the last 10 years it takes a toll on your body and uh, this was the case with her she had injuries in her hip her uh, thigh her shoulder her wrists so i mean you name a body part and that was bruised so it wasn't easy to keep mira by fit for the paris olympics and in that sense it's credit to her team her coach uh, everyone that they managed to get mira by over here and to get her in a shape to at least be competitive and go for a podium finish but uh, you'd kind of think that mira by would have lifted 200 kg because 200 kg and there was a medal for taking over here so she missed it by 1 kg it's turning out to be one of those kind of games isn't it what we've got close to half a dozen fourth place finishes and imagine all of them or even half of them being converted into medals and we'd be really talking about these games in a very different way and uh, yeah i'm just thinking about what prakash padukone said the other day and all the flack that he received and uh, i guess it's time that we do have a very serious conversation but hey i mean this is the day when the hockey team and neeraj chopra take the center stage and if we go by the flow of these olympics we've had one bad day one good day one bad day one good day today was a terrible day so let's hope tomorrow makes up for it more than better more than ever i'm just praying hoping for a hockey bronze and neeraj gold that would really really make it up for all the disappointment today not make it up entirely but at least it will put the smiles back on our faces and the faces of all those who have traveled to paris to support the indians and who kind of spend the whole day watching and following them on tv so something to cheer for them because if tomorrow uh, india bomb then uh, well, there will be nothing salvaging uh, this campaign because there's barely anything left after that okay i guess that's all we have for mihir amit yeah yeah i think we definitely need to let him go because he's filed uh, correct me if i'm wrong he's filed like five copies today yeah yeah <laughs> uh, i don't know yaar journalist ko bhi thoda awards awards jaisa podium dena chahiye yaar for uh, the best stories mm-hmm. and stuff like that because i am pretty sure that the man is basically working 18 or 19 hours a day as he mentioned ki subah utha to kisi ne story bola and since then he is not stopped working and i mean it's not no different with you tumne to mujhe abhi thode der pehle bataya that you are having your first meal of the day at whatever 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock in the night so <laughs> Anyway, we are not the story. But yeah, Vinayak, uh, yeah. Ek to all of these things, then you have something like an Antim happening at these games. And okay, I, maybe Antim is a little bit, we don't know enough of what happened there. So maybe we should just talk about how these are probably our, uh, like this is destined to be like a fourth place games because I mean, we've had way too many. What, we've had eight, if I'm not mistaken, uh, or seven at least now. instances of technically might be six but if you include like one win away from a medal and all that i think it becomes eight you know at this point we are struggling to recall how many so that probably tells the story of where we are at yeah mira finished fourth the way the day was panning out i was not expecting too much i mean it and that is nothing to do with mira herself this is a theory that i had around i think 12 30 about 15 minutes after the story broke from mihir i was wondering you woke up and you heard the story i'm sure like the first call that you made to me we were genuinely in shock right i mean and honestly that we've been saying this through the podcast over the last few days we are not stakeholders in the olympics we don't have personal involvement in the olympics but it does become at some level a little personal like mihir was saying you tend to get attached to things and when we heard that it genuinely like mihir put it it was a proper punch in the gut 
then I started wondering what would it be like for the people actually in Paris, right? I mean, the contingent, the athletes who are about to compete today, what would they have felt? You know, we've been saying so much. Satvik, I remember Satvik's quote on day two or day three saying, you know, Manu's medal is like a big boost for all of us, right? I mean, and we've heard this in the past of how one medal leads to two. It leads to a general upliftment in the mood. The other extreme is also possible, right? And the performances, I'll just list out a few from today. And this is... I mean, if it's one, you know that it's probably underperforming. But there was a series, right? In athletics, Anurani finished with the best throw of 55 and she threw 53 twice. She is not a medal prospect, but she is not a 53-55 thrower regularly. In high jump, we had a 2.25 guy clearing just 2.15. That's big margin from what his season personal best is. We had Jyoti Araji, who I can't recall when she ran a big race, sub-13. And today she was 13.16. And Manika Batra was losing to a player who was not even supposed to be in the team. Shija Akula was play- losing to the same player. I think she was ranked world number 100 or something like that. I don't know. All this was happening in the space of two hours. And then you see a pattern, right? I mean, there is no correlation. With cause and co- You can't prove this. Yeah. But it definitely must have had an impact, right? And I think Antim also happened. Uh, I mean, it didn't happen at the same time. But obviously, yeah, Antim yeah. was uh, one of those big uh, bloodied noses for the contingent in a sense. I mean, her losing in the first round, uh, that is what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Then that was her 10 nil, right? And with a lot of expectations, like Meir mentioned, decent draw. She was seeded. The other seeded opponent in her quarter had just lost the previous bout, uh, Pravala Arke from Greece. It looked like things were opening up suddenly and she comes onto the mat and she's blown away in 100 seconds. Actually, 99 seconds, I think, when she was teched, uh, 10-0. See, Antim wouldn't... Like, the Vinesh incident is an excuse for what happened to... Antim, but it would have definitely had an impact on almost everyone in Paris today in the village. And unfortunately for Antim, the next round, the Turkish wrestler that she lost to was leading 5-2 and looked really good for a win. She really looked really good against Antim too. And then she gets pinned when she was leading the bout. And there goes Antim's chance of a repercharge, which now we wonder even if she did have a repercharge, whether she would have been able to fight the next day because apparently she's coming back home. So who knows how that would have gone <laughs> if there was a medal bout for Antim on Thursday and she was missing it because of this incident. Oh, can you imagine that? <laughs> if that was the case, I mean, as if yeah, yeah. we have not had enough. Everybody who was a nutrition and diet and weight loss expert uh, yesterday would have been like a deportation expert and crime expert today. No, and even just in general for the contingent, right? Like, I mean, there's nothing good about the whole Antim incident. Even though we don't know anything about it, there's nothing good yeah. that will come out of it. Yeah. Uh, so, guessing it's thankful that she didn't have a medal bout, you know, to wrap a charge around to compete. I don't even know what to say about this at this point, right? It's just a whole bunch of series of tragicomic events that unfolded today. Yeah, and ultimately Mirabai, like that's where we were at, right? So I think, I'm not sure how much of an impact this all this had, had on Mirabai, but her getting to 199 is actually a very solid effort. I'd like to say that. I mean, there has been criticism on Twitter of, you know, people hyping up fourth place finishes. You know, journalists should be asking questions. We are not fanboys and things like that. I've seen certain people say that. And on that note, it's we're not hyping up. We're not saying, you know, it's great that she finished fourth. I would like to just add that she's not been comfortable competing for almost the entire time since she got injured at the Asian Games. She had set herself a target of saying 200 would be a play, like you can read the interview with me here where she said, I think 200 is going to be enough for the podium. And 200 was actually the bronze medal spot today. Meera had predicted this about two months back when Mihir met her at uh, NIS Patiala. And today, Meera came to 199. She knew what the podium was going to be. She almost got there, but for one fade lift at the end, right? So these are the margins that we're talking about. You're not trying to hype what Mira did. We're not hi- trying to hype fourth place finishes. But it's also important to understand the context behind such things. Is Yeah, that was something that was right on my mind. So I just want to get that out. Yeah, over to you, Amit. I think I've spoken too much. No, I think, uh, in fact, if we had ended this podcast on uh, the note that uh, me is struck by the end of his third answer, where he spoke about, you know, how... This has been that sort of a games where there is one great day, one terrible day, one after the other alternating. We are having mood swings day by day thanks to the Indian contingent because one day it's incredible. <laughs> like Vinesh beating uh, somebody like a Yui Susaki in the first round, things like that. We have things days like that and then the next day you all know how it turned out. So Mir had struck the perfect note by saying that you know tomorrow we are going to have uh, the Indian hockey team playing for bronze once again. And Neera Chopra competing in the finals, which means I genuinely don't want to say what it means because I'm afraid that I'm going to jinx it. I mean, that's <laughs> what I'm saying, right? Because I know how you said, uh, Vinayak, that these sorts of things, no, these permeate in the camp. These 
कि अरे हमारे साथ ये हो रहा है तो इट ऑल्सो काइंड ऑफ परमिट्स मे बी टू पीपल हु आर वॉचिंग दीज गाइज बिकॉज नाउ आई एम स्टार्टिंग टू थिंक दैट मे बी आई शुड नॉट से इट बिकॉज आई टेल यू समथिंग वेन आई वॉज लाइव ब्लॉगिंग इन द प्रीवियस डेज वेन लक्ष्य सैन वॉज लीडिंग अगेंस्ट विक्टर एक्सलसन आई वेरी हैप्पीली ट्वीटेड थोड़ा सा ज्यादा ही ओवर कॉन्फिडेंस में चला गया मैंने डाल दिया कुछ ब्लॉग पे नेक्स्ट थिंग यू नो लक्ष्य सैन इज लूजिंग नेक्स्ट थिंग यू नो ही इज लॉस्ट वेन ही हैड वन द फर्स्ट गेम इन द ब्रॉन्ज मेडल मैच there was a point when the shuttle hit the net cord and fell uh, into the other ear and i said are matlab lakshya ka din itna acha ja raha hai ki usko luck bhi uska saath de raha hai and i said ki but usko luck ki zarurat hi nahi hai he is playing that kind of badminton ki usko luck ki bilkul zarurat nahi hai and we know how that turned out to be yesterday while i was live vlogging the hockey match ka result i mentioned uh, something like uh, are ye indian hockey team to matlab aisa hockey khel raha hai in the first quarter that they seemed like they could probably have scored uh, something aise hi kuch bahut zyada ambitiously cheeky bol diya so are you saying that we need someone else to find blog you're not blogging neeraj tomorrow i guess i, I don't know <laughs> even if i am I, all i'm saying is that i'm going to keep my expectations in check in fact even if neeraj wins a medal i am not tweeting anything in all caps i am not posting anything on all caps on the blog no exclamation points everything full stops going back to the basics of journalism absolutely no adjectives also मैं बिल्कुल किसी को हाइप नहीं करूंगा भाई अगर गोल्ड मेडल जीत गया दूसरा तो भी मैं उसको हाइप नहीं करूंगा आई एम सॉरी नहीं कर सकता विथ फेयर्स ऑफ व्हाट माइट हैपन फोर इयर्स डाउन द लाइन बट एनीवे वंस अगेन आई थिंक इट इज इट वाज नाइस टू गेट सम लाफ्स एट द एंड ऑफ इट नो जस्ट अनदर रिमाइंडर टू आवरसेल्फ दैट वी आर नॉट टू माय सेल्फ मोस्टली दैट वी आर नॉट द स्टोरी द स्टोरी इज वी आर जस्ट द स्टोरी टेलर्स आई गेस बट या विनायक बिफोर वी से गुड बाय anything else you want to talk about uh, if there are fans who are, who've come to the podcast looking for some hope after what's been a truly dire day for indian sport what is it that they should be looking out for tomorrow see yeah i'm forcing myself to think that way <laughs> because forgetting everything that has happened objectively speaking india are favorites against spain and i know i said that for lakshya sen against lizzy jia and i firmly believe that and for a game and a half it looked like that but india are favorites against spain spain have been on a roller coaster they lost their first match 4-0 to great britain the next day they come back and beat germany 2-0 then they finish the group stage with a big defeat to netherlands the next time they come back they defeat belgium in the quarter finals so it's been that sort of a team so we don't know what to expect my biggest worry for that match is where india are at mentally not with this whole vinesh thing but just their semi final defeat after coming so close against germany so where they are mentally is going to decide a lot of how this match is going to go first 10 minutes i think are going to be massively important india have to start well show that they put the semi final behind them and if we see that in the first 10 maybe 12 minutes i think indian fans can breathe easy so that is a slightly hopeful note the second one of course javelin men's javelin is at 11:55 pm i'm sure a lot of you are going to be up for that even early birds are going to be up for that hopeful again because it's neeraj right i mean we're talking about the guy who has gone repeatedly on the bigger stages and showed that he is not faced by pressure he takes it in his stride uh, he is an outlier in almost every sense of what we have come to expect from indian olympians so that sense yeah of course i'm hopeful he looked like he was in good shape when he threw the one throw i mean one throw is a little difficult to make out with but I mean this is probably to either build excitement or make you all nervous so I don't know I think it's going to be a really close final I think it's going to go a little back and front I think Weber and Peters probably have a big throw in them even Nadeem and if they get that big throw early on that's going to put Neeraj under pressure he has shown in the past that he can respond so either way it's going to be a really good final I get the feeling that it's going to be nice back and forth a thriller which like I said I don't know how many people really want that so and apart from that there are a couple of wrestling bouts aman sarawat and uh, anshu malikar in action two wrestlers tomorrow so that's something to keep an eye on uh, we're not going to predict anything for that so i mean by this point we know better and the other thing is golf will continue aditi and uh, diksha did have a very decent day until their last couple of shots uh, and uh, slipped down a little but they're both in like one shot within each other couple of shots from the third place so yeah that's pretty much we are getting to a point where events start thinning out so yeah well the event start thinning out the action does not the news definitely does not as mihir wasauda will testify he wakes up in the morning starts filing stories goes to bed he still filing stories probably takes power naps between one venue to another i know this because we've covered the olympics together i know i've seen him sit on buses take naps between two paragraphs i've seen him sit on the floor on the pavements and file his copies and that's exactly probably what he's been doing over all these years or all these days at the paris olympics well on that note i think we've run out of time 
but i think uh, we'd also like to get you guys involved because uh, i mean it can't be fun listen to three guys rant about uh, what sort of a day it has been for them and indian athletes so we'd like to hear from you also if you guys are listening to this you can maybe go to twitter and uh, when we post this clip maybe you can respond to that and tell us what sort of a day you think it has been for indian sport what sort of a day it has been for you guys well we'll be back tomorrow with another episode this is me amit saying goodbye on behalf of my colleagues me here in paris and uh, vinayak in delhi thank you so much for listening we'll be back tomorrow for now goodbye You were listening to Express Sports by the Indian Express. This week's show was edited and mixed by Suresh Pawar and produced by me, Shashank Bhargav. If you like the show, then do subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also recommend the show to someone you think will like it. Share it with a friend or someone in your family. It's the best way for people to get to know about us. You can also tweet us at Express Podcasts and write to us at podcasts at IndianExpress dot com. 